And we're back. Welcome to the first session in 2021. And of course, we immediately start hitting it with cold calling. And there's a lot of questions I keep getting. And over the years, people, when they think about sales, they think about two things. They think about, I call them the car sales guys, you know, the nice guys in a suit selling cars or selling insurances. But they also always think about things like the Wolf of Wall Street and cold calling and, and get back to dial. And, and yes, and yes, it is true. I think you need to master it. But I think there is also a bit more than only cold calling. So what I've done is I've asked actually like one of the best of the best uh, cold call experts, which is Philippe Lehoek. You see him down in the screen uh, to do a, a story, uh, to share some information, to share some slides, to share, you know, how it goes. Very pragmatic tips. So first, I'm going to start first because I want to put a frame around it. I don't want you to only think about cold calling. I think it's important. It doesn't always work in all industries, but you need to master it. So let me share you some insights into something else I wanted to talk about. And it's only five minutes. It's going to be very, very short. One of the things that people don't realize is that you need to think when you have a sales team and you're going to do cold outreach, right? It's not only cold calling. There are many other aspects of cold outreach. And one of the ways to start thinking about this is a word. It's called sales cadences. So there is a rhythm. There is a cadence. And I'm going to show you some examples how to do it. And basically, it is a way to reach people. So what is a cadence? In essence, it is... If you target a persona, imagine you target a vertical, you have a persona, let's imagine uh, VP of marketing, sales, it doesn't matter. What is the most efficient, best way to approach somebody in that way? And there, you will see if you start doing that within industries, there is a pattern that will come. For instance, a director, it's easier to reach him via cold call, but maybe somebody more operational, it's more efficient to do it via first LinkedIn and then an email, right? So here you see a very nice example of a sales cadence for uh, inside sales. It's all about um, varying the message, trying to find different angles to reach somebody. And what you see here, and that's the number you got to remember, is five touches. And, and later on, you should challenge Philip, right? You can ask questions in the questions tab, or you can just type it into the chat. It's all fine. But you should really challenge Philip on some of this stuff, right? Now, I wanted to show you. So why five? And there are a few things you need to keep in mind. One is the amount of attempts you do. Two is the type of media you go to. Uh, if we talk B2B, there's a lot of LinkedIn involved. But if you go B2C, there is more Instagram, Facebook, different ways. The duration, how long? And we have spacing. One of the things that I, Philip will also talk about is that when you reach out to somebody and there is no reaction, typically we tend to do, go back at in the day after and then the day after. I like to put some space in between. And people are not linear. It's not like three days, three days, three days. I like to do the three days, seven days, four days. I, I on purpose make it not linear because it's more human. It's less robotized because you know how it is. If you sound like a robot, it's not going to work, right? So you've got to really start thinking like a human. And last but not least, content. Now, most of you have seen my previous webinars. And you know, I always prime content. The key is value in your content. And here suddenly content is at the end doesn't mean anything basically it's basically you for me the content is still prime what you are offering the value you're bringing but you've got to start taking care of other things uh you can have my slides you know that you just mail me on every single um of my slides my email if you want them you can always mail me here are some other examples i just made some screenshots for you here's an inbound sales calendar with the days what exactly how there's outbound sales cadence. there are tools to keep track of this, they're actually pretty expensive. Uh, if you really want uh, a cadence tool, uh, one of the most famous one is Sales Loft. Um, if you phone them up, for I phoned them up. I had a sales team of 15. I phoned them up. I said, they asked me how many salespeople you are. I said 15, and they said, your team is not big enough. Bye, sir. Pam. <laughs> Talking about qualification, right? <laughs> so uh, I was a bit disappointed in them. Here are some other uh, from a company called Callbox. Uh, you see, uh, they ex give you all these examples how to reach them. I don't want to go into too much depth because I want to give the floor to Philip, but I just wanted to share some stats here. Here you see some examples of uh, attempts, uh, optimal seven attempts. So there's a lot of studies around this in media. They say three different media times is the ideal uh, way to reach somebody. I know I'm going fast. Here is an example. 
of uh, of a company called Intel. They're from Ghent, and they shared with me what they do uh, on one of the things. So you see, they first add you on LinkedIn, and then they'll try to reach out with an email or via the LinkedIn chat. They can't reach you, they'll call three times. If they can't reach you, they'll email you. And if you do not react, because don't forget, most people do not react, they'll say goodbye, they'll leave you alone. However, they'll put you in what we call in marketing the literature queue. Basically, every three, four months, they'll get an email that creates a sense of tension. Like, I mean, typically it would be something if you if you would go to Proximus and you would send them an email and say, we just closed a massive deal with Telenet, they will read it, right? That's an example of a, of a nurture mail. Um, so if you start thinking about it, here's one that I use a lot. It's like, I do LinkedIn, I check a profile, so they see me watching, I like a post, then I'll try to send them an email, uh, and then I'll, I'll connect back, I'll try to connect with them, and then I'll try to reach out to them on phone, and then I'll do a demo. So this is something I built for a company that was in the learning space, worked really well for them, However, be aware, as, as time progresses, these cadences can change, they vary. But the goal is, what I'm trying to say is that there are, you have to find ways to reach people. In average, there are five steps. you got to keep track of the five steps. That's the way you build a machine. Having said that, I think it is time to give the word to philip let me explain you a little bit uh what philip has been doing in the past philip has been building cold call centers several ones he has several ones abroad uh, he came to my youtube show a year and a half two years ago when i had way more hair in those days and uh i gave him a floor <laughs> we've been working together on and off so i've seen him in action right i've seen him really in action so what i'm going to do is philip i'm just going to shut up you can take over the screen if people have questions in the meantime, I'll be your host, sometimes interrupt you, and we'll you'll hear me back at the end of this webinar. Okay. Uh, here we are. Ah, okay, everybody, good afternoon. Um, session dedicated to, uh, to cold calling. Uh, this is a, an opening uh, image that I all want you to see. Of course, it's from Wolf of Wall Street where uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is acting as Jordan Belfort. And if you uh, actually, I highly recommend is looking up that scene on YouTube because it will show you in a few minutes how a call script can really help uh, to get you through the difficult uh, phone calls in outbound. It takes uh, three or four minutes. I hope most of you are selling less dubious products than uh, and services than, uh, than the Wolf of Wall Street was uh, was selling, but it's a great way, and he, he shows in an incredible way how a call script can uh, can work and get you through uh, through the works. Um, so, who am I, Philip Luke? Indeed, I am working uh, especially on outsourcing of B two B telemarketing activities. So, we do me and my team we do meeting planning, data enrichment, and surveys. Uh, and it ranges uh, from SMEs to large corporations. For some, we work one day per week. To other, for others, we work with dedicated teams of, uh, of 10 full-time uh, call agents to plan meetings for the sales team. Um, first of all, um, you often read uh, some, some statements on cold calling is dead. Uh, I argue uh, quite differently, but I am probably biased. <laughs> Uh, that's why I, uh, I found an, uh, a great graph from, from HubSpot, who is, I think, about the number one inbound uh, marketing, uh, marketing tool, um, who have asked a, uh, a question a couple of years ago to 6,000 uh, respondents to what has been the most successful channel for your sales reps to connect with a prospect. And the answer uh, actually was that the phone still is the most effective way to reach the prospect that you want. So cold calling is definitely not dead. Don't take it from me, take it from, uh, from the number one inbound platform, HubSpot. First, uh, maybe some legal thoughts. I often get the questions about, yes, with GDPR and can we do this and can we do that or should we just ignore it? Um, well, definitely not. One thing you have to keep in mind, GDPR is generally about email 
and about sending cold emails. The essence is, in, in GDPR rules, you cannot send cold emails anymore without prior consent to individual people. The difference with calling is, so it's an, it's an opt-in uh, uh, um, system. Um, calling and uh, outbound calling, the, the legal aspects of that is that there is a do not call me register, and every European country has one. Um, and there, uh, the essence is, it is an opt-out blacklist, which means you can call every number uh, in Belgium or, or whatever, unless it is registered on that blacklist. To give you uh, an idea on some numbers, in Belgium, there are 1.6 million phone numbers registered on that blacklist. Um, it is both for B2B or B2C, so uh, don't assume I'm, I'm calling companies, so uh, the rules don't apply for me. It's definitely not the case. In Belgium, both B2B and B2C numbers can be registered on the blacklist. And it has both fixed and mobile phone numbers on it. Um, I urge you to, to definitely take that into account uh, if you're doing it yourself or if you are outsourcing calling to a third party, because at the end, you will always remain responsible. And maybe one, uh, one, one, one uh, example is that uh, in two years ago, uh, the French authorities find uh, a company, and it's an SME company, 500,000 euro for infringing GDPR rules in connecting with phone and advertising campaigns. They had multiple call centers working for them, uh, and they didn't respect the rules uh, at all. And ultimately, ultimately, they got fined 500,000 euros. It's worthwhile having a look, uh, a look at, uh, at the Do Not Call Me uh, register. Then, on some cold calling fundamentals, it all starts, of course, with a database. A database is definitely not a cost, but consider it as an investment. Every cent you pay for a good address uh, extra will save you a lot of money further down the road. Uh, we're going to be talking about technology uh, later on, on dials, and especially the number of dials. Of course, we're going to be talking about scripting and how we can optimize our cold call script and ultimately to come to uh, the qualified calls, QCs. And what is a qualified calls? It is act actually a connected call. So you spoke to the person you wanted to speak with, where you get some qualifying information. It can be qualifying, it can be disqualifying. If uh, Michael uh, was, was hung up on the phone because he only had 50 uh, salespeople, well, that was a type that was definitely a qualified call. Uh, perhaps not with the desired results, but at least it was qualified and you will not be calling that, uh, that record again. Technology, some, uh, some, some, some points on this. Uh, source here is uh, the Bridge Group. It's a British consulting firm uh, which is highly into uh, SDRs and then inside sales uh, research. They uh, asked 434 B2B inside sales leaders a number of questions uh, in terms of technology. Now, the graph here is a Gauss uh, curve, where uh, actually you have to read it from left to right, and the further you go to the right, the more inside sales teams are using that technology. So, um, if you look here on video creation, distribution, and tracking, 16% out, out of the 434 respondents answer, answered, yes, we are using video in our outbound uh, in our outbound calls and reaching out um, around 40 percent was losing chat of course that's more in uh, in terms of uh, answering uh, on, uh, on inbound leads um, 45 percent was using gamification and leaderboards it's basically showing the entire team what the individual results are then an important one, call recordings. Also around 45% of the inside sales teams are using call recordings to evaluate, especially themselves. Um, right in the middle here, 50% of the inside sales teams are using LinkedIn Premium or LinkedIn Sales Navigator. 55% um, are using dialers and click-to-dial tools to enhance efficiency. Um, 
around 70%, I guess, are uh, using contact data and account intelligence, and up to 84% at that time were using email automation, email tracking, and sales cadences uh, to reach out to their, to their prospects. So have a look on these different technologies and you can evaluate yourself uh, where you are standing compared to the average of the, uh, the 434 respondents that uh, participated in that, uh, in that study. That was uh, from the Bridge Group. My uh, take on this is, uh, is the following. Um, I definitely suggest that you do register every dial attempt into your CRM. It's going to be difficult knowing how many attempts you have done if you don't register them all. No manual dialing. Absolutely, that is out of the question. Uh, I, I regularly see people still calling with their, uh, their mobile phone, dialing every number individually. That's really uh, out of date. Uh, invest in a, in a soft phone uh, utility that links with your, uh, your CRM. Uh, it, will, uh, it will be much handier to work. Same thing for a headset. Do wear a headset. Don't put your, your phone next to your ear. Um, because it actually keeps your hands free to take notes in your CRM right away. I sometimes see people taking notes on a paper and then manually putting them in into the CRM. This is a bad idea. Just do it as long as you, uh, while you are speaking to, uh, to the prospect. Do record all your outbound phone calls and listen to them afterwards to see to what extent you have been successful with the script that you have, uh, you have built. Database is an investment, not a cost. We, we spoke on that briefly already. Use LinkedIn Premium. Uh, it's, a, it's really worthwhile uh, investing in that tool uh, because if you know who you want to reach, it will help you pass, get past the, uh, the gatekeeper more easily and be transparent on individual results in, uh, in the team. Uh, don't allow for you, yourself, or your, your team members to, uh, to, 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 to hide themselves a bit uh, into, into the overall result of, uh, of the team. Some more data on dials per day, very, uh, very hot topic. Same research from uh, the Bridge Group. Over time, you see that the number of dials per day uh, goes from well over 50 to 45 dial attempts per, uh, per day two years, uh, two years ago. Um, oh, so here we go. Um, my take on this here is uh, the following. Um, block outbound calling time in your agenda. Depending on your job description, depending on, on how much you are, how many other things you are doing in terms of sales or marketing, uh, this should vary from two to five one hour blocks per day. Make sure you're not distracted, stick to the planning, stick to the timing, uh, and focus on those outbound calls. And in fact, what I have, have experienced is that what works best, you sit uh, on your desk, try to try to sit apart maybe in a, in a meeting room or whatever, and don't stop dialing until you reach 10 to 12 dials. Uh, even if you go past the hour, just put keep that number in your head and make sure you're not, uh, you don't stop before you hit 12 dial attempts in that, uh, in that hour. That is what works uh, to keep the cadence and to keep the, volume, uh, to keep the volume working. One important thing here is that we are talking about inside sales people here, not call agents. The difference is, uh, for me, an inside sales is also involved in sending emails, reaching out on LinkedIn, making content uh, to be sure that uh, to make sure that your, your personal brand is built. A call agent uh, will focus solely on outbound calling, maybe of course confirming uh, meetings uh, via email. Um, inside salespeople typically they, they do about 50 dials per day. A dedicated call agent in a B2B environment will easily do 100 calls per uh, per day. So the numbers you, you see here are for inside sales. Flip, uh, Flip, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, there was an interesting question. This morning I phoned with uh, 
a bank phoned me, can't say which one, a bank phoned me. And the first thing they said to me said, uh, hey, uh, this, this call will be recorded and kept for 10 years, blah, blah, blah. Now, one of the questions that, that's popped up mm -hmm. is from Nat Nathan. He says, is it allowed to record calls without consent from the call receiver? Yes, uh, important, uh, important element indeed. Uh, if, if you're going, if you, what you had with the bank this morning, that, that's a financial transaction. That, that's another a whole other ball game than, uh, than outbound calling. Yes, it is allowed to keep uh, a, a recording for 30 days for training purposes, only for training purposes. And then you do not have to announce that you are recording the call. And it's actually what we do. Now we work for a number of uh, telecom and, uh, and energy uh, players. And actually, uh, uh, they, we have to record the calls, namely to, uh, to prove uh, if, if, if later on, if there is a, a complaint, uh, to prove where it went uh, wrong or uh, just to prove that indeed we did, uh, we did a correct job. So you can record outbound calls without mentioning, dear, dear prospect, uh, I am I'm recording this, uh, this call. Uh, but you can keep it only 30 days and the only uh, reason you can keep it is for training purposes. Okay, w one more question, uh, because this is something that a lot of people ask me actually is how many calls can you do? And you said a trained like a call, call center operative or whatever you want to call, mm -hmm. they can do 100 calls in B2B a day. That's the absolute max. That's like killing killing volumes. If you're not trained, imagine you start tomorrow, you have a bit of experience because you continue doing this. What's a good average that you think ah, you should be able to hit? Well, again, that depends on the number of hours you're going to uh, in, invest in cold calling per day. If, if, if you have a complete role as, as, as a typical inside sales, as, um, as you preach, uh, preach it, Michael, um, cold calling is a part of the job. It yep. can be a third of the job, half of the job, two thirds of the job. Um, it is. I find it difficult to put one fixed number per day on the number of dials done for inside sales profiles, mm -hmm. because it, it highly depends on the number of one hour calling blocks you or your or, or your, your, your your company. Uh, believes is the right number of uh, of time spent on I, I, per day. I understand the tango you're doing with me, Philip, but <laughs> we, <laughs> we're just between the two of us and no. the other people. But uh, you, you have in your mind kind of an, an estimate. I, I think you. Oh, can yes, uh, I would refer to to, to the the 434 B two B inside sales leaders. Yeah. Uh, I think here uh, go for uh, go for uh, 50, 50 dials per day. In a typical inside sales role, that is a, that is a good average. Okay, perfect. But that, that means then that, that you are spending four to five hours in a day on outbound calling. Perfect. Thank you. I'll shut up. Go on. <laughs> um, another figure, dials per prospect. Uh, you, uh, you spoke about it uh, already. Same research here. Uh, it goes up, it more than doubles uh, since, uh, since 2010. Of course, what's at stake here is um, the bigger the company you're trying to reach, the more gatekeepers there will be, uh, uh, there will be involved. Um, also, of course, the, the value of your service, if you're selling a telco or an, uh, an energy contract, uh, value would be typically lower uh, than if you're you're selling an high-end high-end software uh, solution, and of course the number of dial attempts should be relative to uh, the value of your product. But keep in mind there is nothing wrong with uh, trying to reach out, dialing a prospect six, seven, eight, nine times. Of course, over a period of uh, of time. My comment on this um, is, uh, is, uh, is as follows. Um, indeed, as you mentioned, build the sales cadence. And cold calling does not stand apart uh, in an inside sales roles from the other things you, you do. Reach out uh, with voice, leave a voicemail, a social, 
uh, again, do a cold call, send an email, uh, etc. So think about what optimal cadence is uh, is right for you, and uh, but make sure that outbound calling, outbound dialing, don't give up too soon. Uh, outbound dialing is uh, is often uh, the most diff of perceived as the most difficult part of uh, of the job, and, and and I sometimes see people giving up after three call attempts. Which uh, which is way 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 too uh, too soon. It will also mean uh, that you're going through your database too fast. And and well, database of uh, of, of uh, qualified prospects uh, aren't, uh, aren't are are only as big as they uh, as they get. So uh, so keep in mind that the number of dials. Uh, is important and, and don't stop uh, don't stop too soon and then qualified calls per day uh, that was actually the top of our uh, our pyramid uh, it went down from uh, from eight to uh, to five point one um, actually again here I, I refer to my one hour calling blocks um, the average of qualified calls per hour is one to two. If you multiply that by the number of calling blocks uh, you have agreed uh, in your in your job description, well, then you come to the number of qualified calls that you should be able to do uh, per day. And a qualified call again is a phone call with the decision taker that you wanted to reach, where you obtained uh, some part of information that can qualify or disqualify that prospect for uh, for you. Okay, that's uh, that's a bit on the uh, the introduction on the, on the number side. We're going to go on uh, call scripting, where of course a call script uh, consists of two elements. There is content, which is specific to each and every one of you, and there is structure. Structure is something that I can bring uh, can bring to the table, and that is what we will be doing right now, right after we have ourselves a little poll. So um, Michael will put on the screen uh, a question for you all, with two simple answers, yes or no. Question is, do you ask today in a cold call to your prospect if the timing is okay in one form or, uh, or the other? Um, we will be very interesting to see what the average result is here. If you say yes, I ask every prospect I cold call if I'm disturbing in some form myself, or no, I prefer not to ask it because I assume the timing is okay as long as I don't get a no from my prospect. So I'm gonna stop sharing now, Michael. So, so classic one is somebody phones you up and you have to you have to imagine. And I had it this morning. They said, "Hi, am I disturbing you?" It's first thing they say. <laughs> yes. Do you do it? Yes or don't you do it? That's the question. <laughs> that's uh, that, that's for uh, for a little later on in the, yeah. in the in this session. The question now is: Do you ask it? Yes or no? Okay. So we see 16, 62 percent says no. Thirty four percent says yes. Okay. So more. Uh, let's go sixty forty. Okay, 60% says no, I don't ask it. 40% says yes, I do. Okay, let me write that down. Interesting to uh, interesting to see. I was actually I was actually very curious about what this was uh, was gonna give. Okay. Uh, so, result here: forty percent is asking it, sixty percent is not uh, is not asking it. Okay, good uh, good to know. We we'll keep that in mind for later on. Again, call script content. That's uh, some homework for each and every one from you. I have uh, four questions or four elements that you should think about uh, yourself for building a call script is one, look for an intriguing opening statement. We'll go into more detail to what exactly that means. Second, what pain 
is there? What pain are you resolving? Third question, how are you helping prospects to solve that pain? And the fourth question, how are you unique? I assume most of you do have a number of competitors. So think about how you distinguish yourself from your competitors. That is the content side of a call script for me. In terms of structure, this is how it looks like. We have eight steps in three phases. We have a greeting, an opening, and a pain statement. We check the timing. We tell how we are helping, how we are unique. We qualify. We definitely do not forget to qualify. And then we do the sale or we plan the meeting. Phase one, typical call script that, uh, that, that I see many times. Hello, is this uh, Mrs. or Mr.? My name is X. I work for a company ABC. Uh, am I disturbing you? So indeed, 40% is, uh, is asking that question. I'm calling you because we, etc. That's a, that's a typical, typical opening of, uh, of a call script. Remember, here we are looking for a greeting, for an opening statement, and for a pain. And here, uh, first couple of tips. Tip one, always say good morning, good afternoon first. It's pretty obvious, but why you do it is you anticipate that the first seconds of a call or a connection, the connection is not very clear. And good morning, good afternoon are typical words that you can reconstruct uh, yourself. Second tip, it's a bit, it can be a bit weird sometimes, but name the prospect name twice. Uh, again, in these first 15 seconds of the call, uh, we have to play a number of mind games to get the attention of, uh, of your prospect. Naming his name or her name twice uh, enforces the idea that it's definitely him or her that you want to talk to. Um, I always think, or I still think, that family name is more appropriate in this stage than first name. Unless you are a, a hip and cool startup uh, who apparently seem to think that uh, everybody is to be uh, to be addressed in their uh, in their first name, I uh, I frankly prefer uh, using the family name. So how does that look in a, in a real script? Good morning. Am I speaking to Mr. or Mrs. X? Hello, Mr. X. My name is from Company X. That's a typical greeting. A note, of course, here, and I, I specifically put it in, be flexible. When your prospect picks up the phone and saying, hi, this is Mr. Thompson, you're not going to do it. You're, you're not going to say, uh, good morning, am I speaking to Mr. Thompson? No, you're immediately going to go to the second, hello, Mr. Thompson, my name is X from, uh, from Y. Opening statement, first 15 seconds, we're still, uh, we're still there. For me, a good opening statement starts with a statement that describes a pain or a wish followed by an open question. Um, and this is where the intriguing statement uh, should be made. Um, it will be different for each and every one of you, but the purpose is here that you make the prospect curious about what will come next, what you are going to tell or ask him next. And look for a statement not that describes a fixed situation. Um, are, you, are you responsible for sales? That, that's not really intriguing. But look for a statement that optimizes the current situation. Some examples, improving the response rate of, increasing the margins on, reducing the time to, reducing the cost to, optimizing the process of, etc., which is actually a move towards something better. And then, end your opening with an open question. Open question is a question to which the answer cannot be just yes or no. Uh, we have to avoid definitely yes or no answers uh, in the opening because it's too risky uh, to risk a, uh, a no and you do want to start a dialogue at that, uh, at that point. Um, how does that look in, uh, in real life? So we had our greeting, then I am looking for the person at company X, who is responsible for the intriguing statement. 
responsible for improving the response rate of, etc. And then once you make that statement, you immediately ask afterwards, to what extent am I talking to the correct person? The prospect will have a very hard time answering yes or no on that question, and it will be a more, uh, you will get an answer broader than just yes or no. Third element into uh, the opening is the pain. We will try to increase the prospect's attention here by describing a general pain. So think what pain you are resolving, in what pain there is and you are resolving in your industry um, and mention that there. Definitely do not attack your prospect by suggesting he himself has that pain. Uh, I coached a, uh, a team once who was saying, uh, we saw your website isn't up to date. That's really not a good, uh, good opening statement. You want the person in a positive mood and not uh, attacking him on how bad or how, how poorly his, his current way of, working, uh, way of working is. Real life example, new script. So you ask, to what extent am I talking to the correct person um, in, the, in the opening? And then, okay, I hear from several customers that, and there you should come the relevant pain that you, uh, you are describing. To wrap up phase one, I put the, uh, the old to the, uh, to the new script. So left-hand side, how it typically looks, and then the new uh, script I'm suggesting to you is all the little elements that we discussed. Good morning, name the name twice, uh, make the intriguing, uh, the intriguing statement, uh, ask the open question, and describe the relevant pain. That's phase one of the, of the call script. Then we're going to move to phase two, where we'll be, we will be discussing the timing, the help, and how we are unique. Again, typical script phase two. We offer this and that. We have developed X and Y, and we have customers A, B, and, uh, and C. Whereas we are looking for a timing, a helping, and the uniqueness of your helping. Timing check. Well, this is uh, this is the poll we uh, we discussed. Um, again, two, uh, forty percent said yes, we're doing it. Sixty percent no, I'm not doing it. Uh, I can understand both reaction. The ones are saying no, and indeed, it is the perfect reason to abandon the call immediately. And when you are suggesting it, that for yourself. Yes, it can be risky. Um, why should you do it? Um, one, it is more polite. But especially for me, it immediately takes away objection number one. And you keep in control of the conversation. We're still in the first seconds of the conversation and you want to keep control. As Michael uh, described the example, when you do this too soon in the call, am I disturbing you? Yes, of course, you are disturbing, uh, disturbing me. My argument is, do ask for a timing check, but don't ask it too soon. So make the prospect wonder what will come first before you do the timing check. And there are different ways to ask a question. Again, in this phase, mentally, you want the prospect to answer yes instead of no. Um, am I disturbing? The desired answer is no, so avoid uh, am I disturbing? Just let him say yes, and how do you do that? Uh, example is here. So we have had the relevant pain in, um, in the, previous, uh, the previous point. Now, is this an appropriate time for you to speak? The desired, quest the desired answer here is yes, and then you answer great. So about, again, the relevant pain, open question, how is that for you, if I may ask? And there, another dialogue should start. So we did the timing check, but with the intriguing statement and the relevant pain, we made our prospect wonder first what will come next, instead of asking it right away. So we took the objection off the table, and we are ready to continue the dialogue. And then 
again, second uh, second poll, same question, but uh, but, but after uh, after uh, this tip, um, would you ask now if the timing is okay later in the call? We are very curious to learn who would consider doing it after the intriguing opening statement and the relevant pain, and or who would still find it too risky to get a no right away. So I will stop sharing and switch to Michael for the second poll. Okay. Okay, I see the numbers fixing. I don't know if you can see, Michael, how many people are, if everyone voted. Yeah. Are you going to wrap up? Yeah. No, no. Okay. Well, actually, great to see that 76% now says yes and 23% says no. Great. So we went to four, oh, 77 even, 77. So we went from 40% uh, who was asking the timing check to uh, to seventy seven percent, which uh, I think a, a number of people in my team will be will find that very uh, very interesting. Great guys, thanks uh, thanks and girls, thanks uh, for these answers. So I am again sharing. That. Okay. So then phase two point five helping. We have described. Uh, the pain, we have checked to what extent the prospect can recognize himself in that pain. Now it is time to help. Um, again, a mind trick here. Right? You have uh, at this stage, you, you, you have a dialogue with your prospect. But then you want to, to grab his attention again and lead him through your, 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 your uh, conversation. And there, uh, the tip actually is can be a bit strange, but literally say, what can we do for you? So after the dialogue, you say, listen, Mr. Thompson, what can we do for you? The result will be that the prospect asks himself the exact same question, which increases his attention. And that's where you want to have him at that, uh, at that point. So again, here, how does that look in real life? Well, Mr. or Mrs., what can we do for you? We are helping companies too, and then, of course, for everyone of you as specific, how you solve the pain. Number six, how are you unique? At this point, you're not only helping, but you want to distinguish yourself from competition by saying what makes you unique and already mentioning what the goal is. So how does that look? So we are helping companies to how you solve the pain. What makes us unique is that we, number one, number two, number three, reason why you are unique. And of course, here you can start inserting a number of relevant customer references into, uh, into the dialogue. And right after this, so you've described, you have described how you're helping, how you are unique. And then you mentioned, and I would like to make an appointment with you about that. So wrap up of phase two. Old script. R rarely I see a pain generally described. It's about us. We offer, we have developed, we have X and Y as customers. Whereas in the new approach, you talk about the relevant pain, you check to what extent he finds himself in that statement. You say, we literally say, what can we do for you? We are helping companies to, again, how you solve the pain. And what makes us unique is that we A, B, C. And you mentioned your purpose of the call. If it's an appointment, of course, you'd say this. If you want to sell on the phone, okay, then you, you immediately uh, talk about the sell on the phone. So wrap up of phase two brings us into phase three. Call qualification and planning or closing the sale or planning the meeting. 
Again, remember we talked about dial, dial KPIs uh, in the beginning. The one to two qualified calls per hour is here at seven uh, at seven stage of the of the conversation. Call qualification. So you get a positive reaction uh, when you mention the purpose of your call. Then start to qualify. Then you have earned the right to ask him a number of a number of questions. And use again open questions uh, to have that dialogue. Always qualify, really important. Um, put the qualification questions in the script, program them into your CRM so that you are obliged to, uh, to ask them and to, to fill them in before ideally you can, uh, you can wrap up the call. Um, keep in mind that often a physical meeting is just too time consuming not to qualify. So how does this look in real life? Um, you mentioned that you have made, that you want to make an appointment for him. So excellent, excellent. Then I have a few questions for you. Qualifying question one, two, three, maybe more. Up to you how much you want uh, to qualify for the meetings that you are planning. And then finally, planning the meeting or closing the sale. Important, bear in mind here, sell the meeting, sell the demo, do not sell the product. That's a, a, a trap some people tend to, uh, tend to fall into. Don't do too much into the first call, but just sell the meeting or the demo. And then when you are making rendezvous, um, limit the meeting options based on your own agenda. Uh, I sometimes see people asking, when do you want to when do you want to meet? And then they end up planning a meeting uh, three months in the future, uh, which is not so not so efficient. And uh, a little uh, help here that uh, that I would suggest is that uh, next time you go to McDonald's or, or, or Quick, if uh, you prefer those, um, pay attention to what they are asking you just after you have um, ordered your meal. They will ask you ketchup or mayonnaise, A or B. They will not ask you, do you want something extra? No, they just give you two options, A or B. And then mentally, it is more difficult for the customer to answer C. Same goes for planning meetings into the agenda. You yourself, you mentioned uh, next week, Thursday, uh, 2 o'clock, or next week, Friday, uh, 10 o'clock in, uh, in the morning. So limit the options into... Uh, based on your agenda for the for your agenda rather than, uh, than leaving leaving it open for the prospect so I would like to make an appointment for you are you available on date one date two and of course do confirm the meeting with an email ideally with a meeting request or a teams uh, a teams invite uh, nowadays so result of phase uh, phase three typically can we make an appointment to see when are you available, etc.? And then here is the qualification and the meeting and planning, which should wrap up the uh, the phone call for you. And I believe we have come to the end of the script structure and content for now. Um, one um, extra that I do want to share with you guys is uh, some recommended reading. Uh, these are uh, three books which I definitely uh, recommend if you want to learn more about uh, outbound uh, sales. First one is the uh, Sales Acceleration Formula by Mike Roberge. Mike, Mike, Mark Roberge is, I believe, the number three employee from HubSpot. And he took it from zero to one hundred million dollar. Um, if you want to read how sales can be approached as a science, I suggest read that book. Second one is uh, the Machine by uh, Justin Roth uh, March. Uh, Justin, if you want to uh, learn more about how to organize your sales teams what to do inside, what to do outside, and which jobs, which tasks to put where. Um, he describes it as the, the division of labor. 
as uh, as Henry Ford did when uh, when installing um, the, uh, the 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 factory for uh, for making his his cars. And there you will read how it definitely makes sense to split the roles into two different uh, two different types. One organizing uh, everything that can be done inside sales, including the meeting planning, and then on outside the face-to-face -face, uh, element, splitting that from uh, from the inside. Uh, yeah. First two, yes? Uh, one, I am extremely disappointed you haven't put my book on there, but I forgive you. <laughs> well, actually, Michael, I, I, I have it here. That is fine. I, have I, I have difficult finding a chapter on cold calling. I agree. I agree. I'm annoying. Maybe okay. in the next print. We still have 10 minutes left. So what I wanted to, <laughs> want to do is I want to mm -hmm. ask you some of the questions that have been asked while you were talking, which are pretty good. Okay. You can remove the screen and I'll just put on my final, my final, um, Definitely. Uh, one, one third book. Uh, that's the one in Dutch. Uh, that's a, a great book if you want to learn more about uh, cold calling, how to approach it. Uh, I believe it is a book which has been sold uh, 7,000 times in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Holland and Belgium already. So uh, this guy, Victor Bunker, has, has done a really great job in, uh, in, in describing and making the, uh, the perfect cold call. Perfect. Thank you. So very quickly before we go to the questions, uh, next week, Friday, you know, it's the series. Next week, Friday, we'll do sales sprints. It's just me talking about how to get sales and marketing working together and to focus. And there is also another um, mentorship training with uh, Arendis and I. The first one is, is full already, so we're at the second one. And what I also wanted to show you is here you have Philip, his email. So if you want Philippe's slides, you'll need to ask him. I don't have them yet, but ask Philip. You can mail him if you have any questions. Please go there. So, Mr. Lehoek, let me ask you some of the questions that have been asked. Yes, today. I see them here. Take randomly, so people can vote actually on 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 the the questions. Uh, what they prefer. some have, have more votes than others. So uh, let me go into a more confrontational one immediately from Mike. Uh, at a certain stage, while you were doing the script, he asked, aren't people bored with this kind of intros? It smells like sales. And he says, I would not never take a call that starts like that. Mm -hmm. So what, what's your opinion? Is, is that because there is a difference between B2C and B2B or doesn't matter? No, I think the difference is how you bring it. Uh, my, my argument is definitely not, uh, well, my argument is prepare your call script. Prefer on what you plan to say, uh, quite detailed, but avoid reading it. Make it sound natural. And that, of course, takes quite some practice uh, to make it sound to make it sound natural. But it all starts with, with preparing um, in the choice between just doing something without a script. And having the script before you uh, as, as a support to, uh, to, 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 to do the call and to, to, to keep control like you want to do it, working with a script is definitely the way to, uh, to go. Of course, and, and you hear that on the phone uh, immediately, if somebody is reading that, uh, that script, it's unnatural. That's, of course, uh, not helping at all. But Practice makes perfect. Uh, prepare and then practice, practice, practice uh, on how you want to how you want to approach it. Okay, next one. So I like this one actually. Uh, we spoke about not giving up to try contacting prospects, but yeah. when you're in the call, my dear, on the phone, do you take no for an answer easily, or do you put effort in convincing them? Uh, well, <laughs> in terms of objection handling, I guess that's what uh, what you're asking. Of course, you're not gonna give up on the first no, as long as you are not not uh, um, yeah, being too assertive. So you remain polite, but still. Uh, 
to some point assertive enough to get the answers that you that you want but at some point of course you 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 have to take no for an answer because if you're ir if you you sense that you start to irritate the prospect okay that's that's not uh, that's not a good uh, good idea either so find a good balance between uh, trying to get what you want but still respecting the uh, the person on the other side of uh, of the phone again here um, there are definitely a number of objections that you can prepare for and prepare for in the script like i have no time eh, which we have um, which we have covered okay so but you won't you won't win them all no 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 not for sure um another question because we still have a few minutes left so i want to ask as many questions as i can here mm -hmm. is a very good one that i always struggle with do you leave voicemails in case they don't answer mm -hmm. yes if, yes if yes uh -huh. do you have tips for a voicemail script uh yes well uh i think when how you how you should look for a voicemail is um you shouldn't expect a voicemail to be answered. Yeah, nobody will call you back. That is, it is highly unlikely that you will be called back in for a cold call to a prospect. The only thing that, that the voicemail serves is making the prospect aware that you are trying to reach him. Yeah, so. You have to start from the right expectation and then a uh, again indeed a voicemail is something that should be scripted because it's it's typically always the same uh, a good tip that i have uh, i have come about is actually mentioning your name and your own phone number twice so you say good day mr or mrs i am x from y i've been trying to reach you can you please call me back uh, my number is zero four etc um, and then again you say my name you, you say your name and you you repeat your phone number twice because you will have you will have experienced it yourself a, a number of times undoubtedly is when you listen to a voicemail and it may sound interesting you 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 I, I sometimes have a hard time remembering what was what was his name again or what was the number that he that he mentioned so script your voicemail yes and try to blend in your own company name and your own mobile phone number preferably twice perfect very good actually um second one i have two more yeah we have two, two questions I'm gonna. The, the, there was one question that has been everybody's asking, so I'm gonna wait for that one. I'm first gonna say there's a classic question: How do you pause a secretary? <laughs> the front desk, right? It's a very yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the front desk. Um, two very different views uh, views here. Um, I think what always helps to uh, in, in any any case is knowing who you want to reach. And then uh, preparation comes uh, in mind with LinkedIn, with uh, with qualitative data databases, etc. If you can tell the secretary, I'm trying to speak to Mr. X Y uh, from that, rather than I'm looking for the person who is uh, who is uh, responsible for sales, etc. Uh, that will connect much better with the gatekeeper. Uh, Secondly, uh, a tip that I frequently encounter, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of it myself, is that um, being familiar or trying to be familiar. Um, so imagine you, you encounter a, a really difficult gatekeeper uh, that you have come across a number of times. Um, it can help to pretend that you know 
the decision maker personally. It's, it's a classic. Eh? Walk in, uh, always pretend you know each other. It's, it's yes, a, yes. Of, you would say very different things. Now, yes. Philip. Uh, but, um, um, yeah, I think it works definitely. But is it is it the right thing to do? I'm not. I'm not sure. Maybe maybe after your seven eight call attempts, when you really when you're getting tired of uh, of trying, that can be the the ultimate uh, ultimate result. Here's the final most upvoted question: How to build the call list? Oh, um, well. Actually, there are a number of uh, very good database uh, suppliers out there uh, who will allow you to, to, to uh, filter quite, uh, quite deeply into your target group. Um, for, for what type of uh, uh, um, activity, which supplier you should use, uh, it depends a bit, uh, but there are definitely companies that, uh, well, whose, whose core business it is uh, to have uh, qualitative databases. And then you can, you can rent those, you can buy, uh, you can buy those. And again, um, every euro well spent on a qualitative database, uh, you will earn it back a multiple times uh, afterwards by, by, not, by not calling uh, companies that, uh, that are definitely uh, out of scope or uh, are not into your target group. Okay, thanks, Philip. Uh, it's, uh, it's time we've got to wrap up. I'm really happy you joined the webinar. Uh, this webinar will be online on YouTube somewhere Monday. If you need the slides from Philip, mail him directly. If you want my slides, you know where to find me, LinkedIn. You can just mail me. Thanks again, Philip. We close okay. the call now. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Bye -bye. Good day.